Thanks everyone for joining today's session on Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework and especially accelerating the deployment of Cloud Adoption Framework with the landing zones using Terraform. Today I'm with a regular of this show, Laurent. Laurent, nice to meet you, Arnaud, nice <laughs> to meet you everyone. <laughs> Thanks for being uh, here again on this, uh, on this show. So today is about a couple of stuff, how you accelerate the deployment of Microsoft Azure using Terraform. So the agenda for today is very simple. First, introduction to the very fundamentals of Cloud Adoption Framework. Then we're going to talk about the landing zone concept, how you create your first landing zone and how you customize uh, the following deployment, and basically just getting started with it. So Laurent, what can we do about that? Before I'm going to talk about the, the, the landing zone and the blueprint, so I want to make an analogy with what we are trying to achieve and trying to build here when, when it goes to Azure. So it's very similar like an airport. So if you take an analogy Arnaud with an airport, so what you need to do with the airport? There's so many things you need to do by building the runways, make sure that the planes will be able to have a car park, make sure that you will be able to build your terminal to welcome the people who are going to be at this airport. You will create an experience for departure, arrival, people who have to check their uh, boarding pass, there's some identity as well when you go through the border. So you see an airport has different dimensions. But at the end of the day, it's also creating a unique experience for the people who are going to, to be at the airport, like the beautiful uh, air, um, dome in uh, Shanghai Airport. You can see, so trying to, to make this experience a bit quite unique and um, different from all the other airports that we know. So building a virtual data center on Azure is very similar to that. So we need to make sure that we are going to be able to onboard all those different airlines because those airlines need to bring some people in and out. That's how you measure the success. But before we can, you can do that, you need to make sure that you connect all the dots. You see, everything must be working properly, like in an airport. So on a virtual data center, if I go to the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework, we need to follow exactly the same. The Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework that you see here on the summary slides focus on defining the best practice that Microsoft has been learning over the last decades, uh, the virtual data center, the Azure scaffolding, and it's all about aggregating those best practices in order to be able to focus on building those foundations, connecting the dots, to make sure that you can focus on what matters. What matters when we do digital transformation is focusing on migration, modernization, and innovation that you can see on the adoption phase of this uh, framework. What we are going to focus on today in those Azure uh, landing zone and blueprints is on the readiness aspect and the adoption. But if we focus just on the readiness aspect and the adoption without including the governance and the management, we won't be able to be re ready and to focus and to open that to the public. Okay, so we want to make sure that whatever we do can be usable in production. So the Cloud Adoption Framework methodology that we've got and we're going to present today in this webinar focus on those different aspects. If I go to the readiness session of the Cloud Adoption Framework, you will see there's a set of resources and, and guidelines that explain how you, you manage all your different resources. But then it's focusing very much on the, the landing zone. So the infrastructure, the identity, the cost management, and then a different set of blueprints. The blueprints will, will be very much like your building blocks, okay, to be able to, to construct your uh, data center, your solution, your applications, like for example SAP, like an AKS cluster with Kubernetes, it could be a web app, it could be the DevOps, and then the landing zone are going also to, to, to reuse all those different components to make sure you can start deploying your applications. You can focus then on migration, so that some customer want to start a digital uh, transformation focusing on migration, modernization. So you can reuse, you can optimize, or you can also want to include also the, the security of your uh, application. Some customers want to focus on innovation, so they want to use the cloud as a way to innovate. They want to embrace AI, machine learning, they want to refactor uh, what they've done. They want to re-architect, you know, the 5R that we, uh, uh, that we heard. They want to maybe rebuild from scratch something that was not fit for purpose. But they want to embrace, you know, innovation, DevOps, uh, culture. I think that's something that we see is like many customers are actually doing two at the same time. They are actually trying to decommission their data center, get savings out of that, to then have more money, more energy to spend on the innovation as well. So that's really, we see those customers 
tackling those two challenges at the same time. So how do you achieve this? Well, Cloud Adoption Framework and uh, the Lending Zone basically offers you accelerators to go this way. Absolutely, Arno. So, so if you go to Lending Zones, what is it all about? Well, that's really the value proposition we want to insist is some prescriptive uh, architecture guidance that we're giving from the Microsoft field. So that's really uh, those things that we are deploying every day, you and I, and many other engineers with our customers, and really uh, getting a direct guidance and say, do that, it's proven to work. It's how we do that for a big uh, organization and it's how it fits in maybe smaller organization. What we wanted to do with those uh, Cloud Adoption Framework landing zone is that obviously it's aligned with the guidance of the Cloud Adoption Framework. So Cloud Adoption Framework comes with a set of decision trees for your deployment, for your decisions on compute, storage and network. Well, that's all directly aligned on those constructs that we build uh, those landing zones. It's really um, important to mention that it is enterprise grade and it is inspired by FSI uh, requirements. So that's from the strictest uh, type of deployment that we see. We want to have auditing, accounting of whatever is happening on the environment. And that's really one of the focus that we want to have is out of the box, all those production grade, quality uh, grade of uh, deployment is in the box by default without you having too much to worry about. So in a way, it's a kind of a best practice in a box. You just have to unfold it and the, all the thing comes alive. What we want it really to focus is to have a lower entry uh, cost to infrastructure as code. We want it to have a code base where you can rely on to deploy very easily an environment that comes with all the building blocks that you need to have. It's community-based. We propose that available on GitHub. So you are free to fork it, to create pull requests, enrich it, uh, use it in your environment, add your own value, and ultimately accelerate the delivery of value for you or for our partners. And we really uh, had a focus on how to make it easy to customize, deploy, and reuse in multiple environments. So that's really what we focused on uh, those aspects that we focused on when we created those landing zones. Now, if we give a quick example of what is a landing zone, so we provide you with a set of landing zones that are available on the GitHub repository. So you see a landing zone, for instance, would be here, this deployment that includes all my core uh, resources inside my hub operations, my hub core security, where I have my log analytics repository with the solutions for log analytics, where I have my subscription uh, login, which is automatically put into a storage account, into an event hub, and same thing for the security uh, uh, event and the operations log comes on the storage account for long-term retention and event hub for a fast access to the data. And as well as you see on the left part of the screen, it comes with automatically deploying security center, adding the right policies that you have in this environment. So Azure policy to drive the behavior of the subscription, maybe restrict some of the behavior to make sure that you're compliant with some frameworks, for instance and deploying a set of technologies. So if you see uh, on this environment, you have in the resource group hub core net, you have one uh, network shared services with a set of virtual network. You see that by default out of the box, we've come with the right network security group with the security endpoints, the service endpoint that agree uh, that are aligned with that. We come with the egress blueprint here, having the Azure firewall with a public IP address with the right UDR object that allows you to redirect all the traffic to this guy. So that's really out of the box, all those capabilities that we add in a landing zone, it's a complex environment that deploys a ready to use, let's say bed to lay my applications. So what's the bill of material? Well, basically we provide you with a set of uh, Terraform landing zone, with a set of blueprints, a set of modules, and we're gonna see later what it's all about. And we provide you as well with some deployment and design guidance, how to create your RBAC model, how to create your access delegation to the environment. And it's all available on GitHub, so you can find that on aka.ms slash tf, transform, dash landing zones. You can download all those uh, elements out of there. So let's start with our first focus on the tranquility blueprint. So this is one of the first blueprint that we use in the landing zone and as you see this one hub operation deploying all the operations logging uh, fundamentals, uh, log analytics for the best practices analysis for my active directory, my AD replication, my health, my DNS analytics and my key vault analytics, security center, the activity logs on my environment and all of that let's see in a demo how we put that in action.
Let's get started and deploy our first Cloud Adoption Framework landing zone based on Terraform on Microsoft Azure. So the first step is to clone the Git repository that we have and then execute the launchpad, which is going to set the foundation for our environment. So the launchpad, as we see, is going to deploy a set of primary resources that are, for instance, a key vault where I have restricted the permissions and I will store the secrets, a managed identity and a storage account that I will use to store the Terraform state. The next step is to run my Terraform plan so that I'm going to deploy the different modules in my landing zone and I'm going to see that amongst them there is security center, a set of resource group, log analytics and log analytics solution. Once I've done that, I can run my first command using my apply command and this is going to really deploy the resources within my subscription. After a couple of minutes, you see that those resources are taking life and if you go back to your subscription, you will see that you can filter the resources by tag as we are leveraging it and you can see that you have in the core security the activity logs for your subscription and you can see that in operations you have your log analytics and a set of solution to analyze the health of dns and key vaults for instance and also event hub for the operations log and storage account for the longer term retention so this is how to get started with the landing zones using terraform on microsoft azure Thank you, Arnaud, for, for this uh, demonstration of uh, tranqui the Tranquility uh, Blueprint. So what you can see now, we can extend uh, and add additional Blueprint as well when you build your virtual data center. So let's focus on the policies. As you see, the policies here can focus on added some capabilities on, to, uh, on your virtual data center and focus, for example, on restrictions of location, restriction of services, defining if you want to authorize or not some public IP address. So there's different elements like that that you can include in the, in the policies. You can also enforce the security center if you want to monitor additional security information. The idea of the security center is to make sure that by default, everything will be evergreen. Okay? So you can identify before you start deploying anything, this policy is going to enforce that this is what you can do, this is what you can't do. This blueprint, shared services, is another one that we are going to, um, uh, to, to use to, to, to lay out the networking, and that will be the foundation of my, uh, my shared services network. So in this example, what we are putting is an Active Directory subnet, it can be a SQL Server subnet, it can be a network for monitoring, so there's different options. But as you can see, those elements are designed to focus only on shared services. So the idea that we're going to demonstrate on this second uh, presentation is how can you build your first landing zone? And Arnaud, share a little bit more on this uh, landing zone. In my previous demo, I was using uh, Cloud Shell to deploy my environment. I'm not going to do that on my Windows laptop and cloning the repository to my local machine. So I'm in Visual Studio Code and you probably see that I'm going to open a terminal. I'm using Windows uh, subsystem for Linux. This is a preview um, Windows Insider build while well, I'm using WSL2 and running Ubuntu on it. I'm going to go to my Git uh, repository where I have the files. And I'm going to clone uh, the blueprints locally on my machine. So I get the URI uh, for the repository. And I'm just going to run uh, locally a git clone of my environment. So going back to Visual Studio Code. And here we go. I'm starting to download the components and I have that locally available. So you see that I have the launchpad all the data for the launchpad, then I have the blueprint and I have the landing zone, uh, which is the level one we're going to see uh, in this en environment. So here you see all the technicalities of the provider versions, the data providers that we're using for the Terraform state. And you see that we have proto dot landing zone dot auto dot tfr. So for usability, that's the default template that we provide so that you're able to tune an environment, set a couple of variables and being able to quickly get started with the environment. So here I have a couple of extra resource group. I don't need them. I can remove them. I just keep the diagnostics log for 30 days and I have a set of tags that I'm going to customize here for just the lab environment that I'm going to deploy. 
you can see that I can customize the name of my Log Analytics workspace, and I can customize the email address for Security Center where I'm going to store the, I'm going to send the alerts. I have a set of Log Analytics solution as well. And if you look at the details, actually, you see that the landing zone is calling a blueprint, which is Tranquility, and Tranquility is actually a set of modules that set the very foundation of your subscription, like the Log Analytics security center so that's how it is coded you see that i'm going to actually call other modules that are stored inside the github repository so if i'm going to actually launch the first script i'm going to see that the first step that i need to complete is to run Launchpad. So Launchpad is going to set the whole environment with the key vault repository and all the technical uh, prerequisites I need to run my uh, landing zone. So it's creating the user um, uh, application identities. It's creating here all the information that we have to uh, store the Terraform state inside a storage account and restrict to the right permission for it. Once it's completed, you can see that I'm uploading the Terraform state inside this very uh, storage account that I created previously. So you can see that in blog, TF state, here we go, that's where my uh, shared state is uh, actually uh, stored. If I go back uh, inside my environment, then I need to run the landing zone. So first step is running the landing zone VDC level one. And I'm going to do a plan to check at what resources are going to be deployed. You can see that at this stage, this is when I'm downloading all the different module and I'm downloading the different uh, providers for Terraform with the version constraints I specified in my uh, source code. You can see also in here that I'm having the set of modules that are being called with the different arguments and how it's going to look like in my deployment. So here we go. We have 19 uh, things, objects that are going to be deployed. So I'm going to run the apply. And after a couple of minutes, well, all the elements are going to come to life inside my Azure subscription. That's completed. So now back to my subscription and let's see a little bit more clearly here by filtering based on the tags that I'm having uh, those two resource group as I define with the storage account and the event hub for my Azure activity logs and inside the resource group operations then this is where I have stored uh, the log analytics solution the log analytics repository and the same thing the event hub and uh, the storage account as well we don't see it here but there's a security center that has been deployed for me at the same time and the alerts configured to my email so we just seen our first uh, landing zone and the deployment of the first landing zone we can go way further and accumulating the landing zone on top of each other to create a really uh, complex environment so we see here that we have our egress or core network and we added transit and why not it's very common in a um, environment that we're going to add some features like the ingress for instance so i would like to add in my environment uh, my maybe next generation firewall my web application firewall for the inbound path and that would be the one that will be publishing centrally my web application to the outside world so let's view that into a demo where we're stacking up the landing zones in an environment so let's go big and tranquility is just the green side of the screen. Now we're going to deploy all the rest around it. So you see that I have actually additional landing zone inside my environment. Tranquility, you already know it. I'm going to add a couple of more resource group that I need for the deployment of this environment. And that's, that's it for this one. I'm going to then check at the configuration for the level two. So level two adds all the networking aspects of my environment plus some operational aspects. You see that a landing zone is actually calling a set of blueprint and those blueprint you have the egress, the shared networking and the operations, each of them being called by their own Terraform uh, file. So if you look at an example here, I'm configuring the network information for my shared egress network. So I'm putting the IP address space, the different subnet DNS that I want, the public IP address name, the name of the Azure firewall that I'm going to create to uh, filter the egress. And then that's my shared network. And you see that I put here all the list of my NSG, my network security group. In my operations here, I'm tuning the name of the automation account and the Azure site recovery 
volt. So in the meantime, I'm going to do the launchpad and again, I'm going to start the deployment from scratch, uh, deploying all the information here. In the meantime, I can see at this uh, content and I can see that actually the networking, egress and shared services are actually calling a set of blueprints. So let's have a look at what's inside those blueprints. If I go and start with shared egress, you can see that from this guy, I am actually deploying first the virtual network, then a public IP address. Then once I have that, I'm deploying an Azure Firewall. I'm uh, deploying a set of rules for this uh, Azure Firewall. And I'm also creating a user defined root object. You can see also here that I'm configuring some sample rules to authorize communication to Microsoft.com and to authorize communication to Windows Update, Azure Backup and Azure Site Recovery. I can have a look at the operations blueprint and you can see that from this guy, we are actually going to call two things, Azure Site Recovery and Azure Automation. So Blueprint Operation is responsible for populating only those two components for my environment. So here you see the stacking. A blueprint is actually a set of modules and a landing zone is actually a set of blueprint so that each of those components is very specialized is doing only one task but is doing it well so you're not afraid to update the different component you can also make your uh, environment easily evolve inside the deployment so I'm gonna run and actually what we see after a couple of minutes if I'm a little bit fast forwarding I can see that all the components are coming to life so here we go, you see that we have all the components. So if I go to the core network, I see that all of my network security group are present. So we see the LDAP and RPC endpoint mapper rules for my network security group. I have my different subnet with the uh, network security groups attached. And I have also configured the peering to the egress virtual network that is also being deployed within the subscription. Now I can go back and I can see that, for instance, when I'm going to see the egress network, then I have here all the egress configuration with my virtual network, the Azure firewall that is tied to it on 10.004. And when I go back to this environment, I see that I have a UDR object that points to Azure firewall. If I go to Azure firewall, I see that here I'm having this public IP that is being used and I can see that I have automatically the diagnostic settings being configured. So all the logs, I have them uh, already, no need to do further action. And I also have a set of templates rules that I've seen in the code a couple of seconds ago uh, with my uh, URL filtering and with my tag filtering to authorize communication from this network to Azure Backup, Windows Update and Azure Site Recovery. Then I can see at the operations, I have my Azure uh, automation account and my Azure site recovery and I have my backup policy that I created in Terraform as well which is here present for me and ready to serve my virtual machines. So here we go that's uh, how much you can uh, play with those uh, Terraform landing zone and how it really accelerates the way that you're deploying things on Azure allowing you to focus on what matters allowing you to prototyping fast deployment with your customer or yourself internally in your organization and really iterating, fast iterating, improving at each iteration, learning from uh, those deployments. That's really what we wanted to have with those landing zones. Easy to get started, easy to build complex stuff, being extensible and being a community work. So taking contribution from internal Microsoft uh, architect, people um, from our community, people from our partners. That's really what we have in mind for that. So really start playing. You have start deploying your first landing zone like we just did in this demo, aka.ms slash tf dash landing zones. And that's available there. You can go further by a set of resources, Laurent. Yes, yeah, so you got uh, the cloud adoption framework uh, methodology that uh, uh, when you got uh, all the details of uh, what the CAF framework uh, covers, you've got also the virtual data center, so with the VDC, which is a good way to see those reference architecture, the hub and spoke topology and how to organize all the different resources. If you, st if, if you are very new to Terraform, there's also a good way to start using the Azure Citadel for Terraform a very good way to understand how to start with Terraform on Azure. 
And of course, Arnaud, we got your famous blog. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if you have not subscribed yet, so please do. Uh, thanks for the free ads. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've got also a YouTube uh, playlist where we've got all those uh, set of uh, videos on the landing zone that you will be able to follow uh, over time. So we're still taking a couple of questions in the chat box in the, in the section right now. So don't hesitate. Happy to take uh, any of your questions. And Again, thank you for joining this session and thanks for your attention. Don't forget, on the next module, we're going to go deep dive into how all the things that we show are architected and how you can go very deeper in the configuration all of that. Thank you again and see you in the next session.